Pittsburgh Steelers at home this week for some Saturday action on a three-game losing streak, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, who come in on a three-game winning streak. The snap's good, the hold is good, and the Bengals have come back to beat the Vikings in overtime. Both these teams understand the Santa Claus. Each of their St. Nicks has slipped off the proverbial roof, having to hand their keys to the sleigh to someone else. The Bengals think they got themselves a Tim Allen who delivered a little early Christmas miracle last week. Browning, looking, pressure, throws it deep, and the ball is caught by T. Higgins at the one-yard line. And it's actually called a touchdown. Okay, T. Higgins deserves the credit on that one. Wow, nothing but respect. Anyway, I don't know if Jake Browning thinks Denny's is an American institution, but I do know the Steelers are facing a more refined version of him compared to when they first met him a few weeks ago. And it wasn't that Browning was bad then. Week 12, his first ever NFL start, he goes 19 for 26, a touchdown, a rating over 95, flashed plenty of signs that showed he knew what he was doing. Browning, fake it, flip it, catch made. Sample bangs into his own man for the touchdown. Cincinnati did not win that game, though. It was their last loss, Pittsburgh's last win. Steelers took a defensive battle 16 to 10. Looking left, throws that pass, intercepted at the 15 yard line. Pittsburgh didn't put up many points, but Kenny Pickett put up 278 yards on Cincinnati, a season high, one of his better 2023 outings, and there's a chance he returns this week. Pickett back, throws it down the near sideline, that's Pickens, he pulls it in! Even with Pickett putting up that big game, only 16 points though, Pittsburgh hasn't been able to score 19 points in five straight games now, the last two with Mitch Trubisky at QB, who had Steelers fans feeling like Billy Bob Thornton found their Santa suit. Two interceptions last week, only one touchdown, a sub-70 rating, only 169 yards. Flings the ball, you see it, the feet aren't set, tries to flip it out there, goes high, easy interception for the Colts. If Pickett can't go, I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? A couple days before Christmas, just get Rudolph to guide the sleigh. Clearly, it's that time of the year. It should work. Turning to their backup quarterback, benching their starter in the final two minutes of the game and saying, try to go win it. Look, whether it's urinating tree, chiseled Adonis, P. Daddy, or Deb at QB for Pittsburgh, for that matter, they will be facing a secondary that has been giving up big yards through the air this season. Over 250 per game on the year, eight yards per attempt. That's not good. And neither is giving up over 12 yards per completion. In their latest loss, they gave up over 300 yards, two touchdowns, and a rating near 100 to Nick Mullins. Pressured again, throws it off his back foot, caught! It's caught by Addison, he's gonna go all the way in for a touchdown! Yes, CTB, you are what they call a difference maker. Who day knows. Now, Bengals did pick Mullins off twice. That's their defensive strength. They have one of the highest INT totals in the game. Mullins pressured again and he gets dropped by bj hill did he lose the ball on top of it the refs say yes and they sacked mullen three times trey hendrickson one and a half of those 15 for the year now has a half a bag or more in 12 of 14 games a really good job i've said that darisol has held him in check and for the most part he has but right there hendrickson goes up the field and past the quarterback which is usually a good job by that offensive tackle mullen's looking to find space hendrickson comes away with the sack Pittsburgh's run game has been non-existent the last two games, but Najee Harris and Jalen Warren will not only be looking at a run defense they both fared well against when they squared off in Week 12, it's one that gave up 132 yards to Tyson Chandler on 5.7 yards per carry last week. Hand off to Chandler, spins, and he is in! Pittsburgh's own run defense doesn't come in feeling very cheery either. They gave up 170 rush yards to the Colts, 5 yards per carry, and they were facing Indianapolis's second, third, and eventually fourth running back option. Nice to be able to have your third back come in and make some big plays for you. Zach Moss has been great, goes into the tunnel after that touchdown. Trey Sermon, nice job there hitting it off tackle so cue joe mixon right 4.7 per carry last week he scored takes the hit from cincinnati ivan pace and barrels in joe mixon stays up off the ground reaches the ball across that goal line running through him angry as he gets into the end zone only 10 carries though mixon isn't the one pittsburgh's defense should be worried about bengals are still chucking it more than toking it Browning leading Cincinnati back to victory last week on the back of a 324-yard outing. Browning flush, throws it downfield, the ball's caught by Boyd! 
keeps his footing inside the 30, cuts inside the 20. Have to keep tabs on Jamar Chase's status. He left last week hurt. His absence would be pretty big. Has Chase wide open, and he makes the one-handed grab inside the 25. But still, Browning has completed over 70% of his throws and stepping in. In the last two games, he's played the Santa role to a T, making sure all his pass catchers get something. Tried to drop a ball on 12 different guys last week. Looks, throws to the end zone, Higgins touchdown! Browning did get bagged four times by the Vikings, probably goes down a few more times this week with TJ Watt out there. He picked up two more QB takedowns versus the Colts, has 16 on the season. Oh. Minshew kept it, and T.J. Watt is saying thank you. Watt's play, though, last week didn't translate to good pass defense. Three touchdowns allowed to Gardner Minshew, no INTs, a rating over 120 allowed. Leads to Minshew to the end zone. Touchdown, Mo Alley Cox. Only 215 yards, though, they dealt with their offense, handing the Colts short fields three times. The season has three weeks to go. Mike Tomlin has to win two of three to keep his streak alive and a shot at the playoffs alive. Bengals are trying to hold their spot down. Fill the comment section with the kinds of beef that can only be cooked up by this rivalry. We shall fill the screen with our panel of 10's picks. Merry football season to all and all a good night.